<laughs> yeah, those farmers up in the northwest corner, they've got the snow plies, so they probably will come out for him. Uh, we shall see. Um, listen, Larry Sabado, Brian Stelter, Miles Taylor, Amanda Entria, lovely to have your company this evening. Thank you very much indeed for that. Uh, remember that you can stay up to date on all the build-up and developments from the Iowa caucuses as they happen uh, by following the live page on the BBC News app tonight and website, as well as live continuous coverage here on the BBC News channel with our teams who are on the ground there in Iowa, braving the cold. I hope you'll join them for that. We'll see you for the results tomorrow. Good night. I'm Katrina Perry in Des Moines, Iowa, and this is a special BBC World News America. The first caucus of the 2024 presidential election will take place in Iowa as voters brave the bone-chilling cold. Concern grows over the fate of two Israeli hostages after Hamas claims they've been killed. And a Houthi missile hits a US-owned ship off the coast of Yemen days after US-UK strikes. Hello and welcome to World News America. I'm Katrina Perry. Well, the race for the White House starts tonight here in Iowa. Bitterly cold conditions have not stopped the first major statewide vote to decide who will be the Republican candidate for US president. There are several individuals in the field, but the three polling highest at this late stage of the race are the former president, Donald Trump, former South Carolina governor, Nikki Haley, and Florida governor, Ron DeSantis. The former president's dominant numbers have turned this into a race for second place. The latest poll from the Des Moines Register this weekend shows Donald Trump polling first, just short of the 50% mark. Ms. Haley is polling in second place with building momentum. Iowa has just 40 delegates in the Republican nominating contest out of the 2,400 or so up for grabs, but its significance lies in being the first caucus in the nation. It's often seen as a preview of how the overall race might go and can make or break campaigns. While we've been in Iowa, I've been out meeting local people and finding out the issues that matter to them here ahead of this first test of the campaign season. And they tell me the extreme cold won't stop them getting out to caucus. Well, since the 1970s, Iowa has been known as first in the nation, the caucus to kick off the race to the White House each election season. Most states run primaries to nominate a presidential candidate, but caucuses are more complicated. Caucuses are done in person. For the Republican caucus, only registered party members can participate. During each caucus, representatives for the candidates make speeches and then the registered voters cast their vote with a secret ballot. The votes are counted and results typically announced to the room. The first results could start coming in within an hour, so around 8 p.m. Eastern time. Iowa's 99 counties are divided into 1,657 precincts. Some precincts caucus in the same place, but there are still 729 caucus sites in all. For the most part, they're held in traditional locations, like we've mentioned, like any other election, but in some rural areas, they do have to improvise. In Garnavillo, caucus goers will assemble in the local diner, Thomas Dairy Bar. In Comanche, they'll caucus in the workshop of Lee Stoffer, a musician renowned for his skills in tuba repairs. And in Silver City, with a population of 245, they'll meet in the living room of the town's mayor, Sharon McNutt. 
Democracy in Motion. Well, let's go now to Carl Nasman, who is at the Iowa State Capitol. Carl, what's it like out there? How's the weather holding up? Does it look like people are going to make it out tonight? Get it rolling and get the results coming out exactly. to all those eagerly you awaiting bet, them. <laughs> yeah. Steve Scheffler of the RNC, the Iowa Rep here. Thank you very much well, for thank joining you. us. Appreciate it. News. Thanks so much. Thank you. Now to some other news. A new video released by Hamas purports to show the bodies of two dead Israeli hostages in Gaza. We're not going to show you that. But it does claim to show 26-year-old Noah Argamani speaking under duress, saying that two men she'd been held with, 53-year-old Yossi Sharabi and 38-year-old Itai Seversky, were killed while in captivity. In a statement accompanying that video, Hamas claims the hostages were killed by Israel's bombardment. Israeli military spokesperson Daniel Hagari denied this, claiming the building where they were being held was not an Israeli target. He called the video a proof of life for Ms. Aragamani, but said the government told the families of the two men that it had grave concerns for their fate. Israel's defense minister Yoav Gallant is accusing Hamas of using psychological abuse, adding that while the intensive phase, as he described it, of Israel's attacks on South Gaza would end soon, he said, Israel will keep putting pressure on Hamas, arguing the group will not agree to release hostages without it. Meanwhile, a 70-year-old woman has been killed and at least 18 people injured in a stabbing and car ramming attack in the central Israeli city of Renana, north of Tel Aviv. Two Palestinians from the occupied West Bank were reportedly arrested. Israeli police say that an initial investigation suggests the two related suspects from Hebron were working illegally in Israel. The Houthis say they targeted a U.S.-owned cargo ship off the coast of Yemen in the Red Sea. The U.S. military confirms the ship was hit by a missile, but says no one was hurt. This follows airstrikes launched by America and Britain's military late last week in an attempt to defend international shipping from attacks by Iranian allied Houthi rebels in Yemen. Houthis began attacking vessels traveling through the Red Sea in November, saying they were acting in solidarity with the Palestinians. Many major shipping companies have started taking a long detour around Africa to avoid the Red Sea. Today, UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak faced MPs for the first time since airstrikes launched on Friday. A volcano in southwest Iceland erupted for the second time in less than a month. Residents in Grindavik called it a black day as fountains of lava swept over the town, destroying several houses. While authorities say the volcanic activity is calming, officials are questioning whether it's safe for residents to return to the region. Now remember, you can of course find out all about the day's news at our website bbc.com forward slash news and you can see what we're working on at any time by checking us out on your favourite social media platform. You can watch our coverage of the Iowa caucuses tonight, analysis reports and of course the all-important results here on BBC News. I'm Katrina Perry. Thank you for watching World News America. Do take care. Bye-bye. Hello there. We're quite likely to see some disruptive weather.